This is JT, welcome to Body Weight Strength. In this video, I'm gonna talk about protein. And up until this point, I have focused my content creation efforts on systematizing body weight strength training and making it so anybody can find my content and quickly start an effective resistance training program. The reason for that is that all available research points to a positive correlation between physical activity and health, wellness, and human longevity. So no matter who you are, no matter how you eat, no matter what's going on, if you're physically active, you're going to fare better. And if you build strength and hypertrophy and then um, cardiovascular fitness, you're going to live longer. So that was why I focused on the strength training and the um, physical activity portion of being healthy. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that we still have to talk diet, we still have to address what we're going to eat. Right, that's the other side of the coin. And where researchers unanimously agree that physical activity is correlated to human longevity, um, everybody disagrees or has all these different camps and warring factions um, with regards to how we should be eating to optimize health and wellness and longevity. And so what my goal is, is to help you um, see kind of the big picture. And in my mind, the big picture is restoring metabolic health. And so that can happen uh, with a standard diet, not I mean standard American diet, but with a standard diet of um, a, a balanced approach of protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Um, you can restore metabolic health with, I mean, a vegan diet could do it, a vegetarian diet could do it. I'm not saying any of these things are the optimal way to do it, but what I'm saying is that any of these types of diets can restore metabolic health and in restoring metabolic health that is the low-hanging fruit that's the biggest most important thing that you can do to ward off the diseases of civilization your cancer your heart disease and all these other things um, and I'll, I'll reference Centers for Disease Control <clears throat> has some statistics and they estimate that the average American eats 15 to 16 percent of calories from protein and they eat 50% of calories from carbohydrates and 33% of calories from fats. So the average American eats a low protein, high dietary energy in the form of carbohydrates and then fats diet. Okay, the reason this is a problem is that as a nation, we are not metabolically healthy. We're metabolically unhealthy. And recent research, I think it was the first study that actually tried to measure this, um, the metabolic health of Americans found that 88% of us have poor metabolic health. Only 12% of us are considered um, according to the parameters of the study, metabolically healthy. And the problem with this is the metabolically healthy people have a drastically reduced occurrence or chance of developing the diseases of civilization, the diabetes, the heart disease, um, these different autoimmune conditions and cancer and things like that. So that means that 88% of us are more likely to have to deal with these maladies. And so the 88% of us, um, if we look at the 12% in the studies, which again, I'll link in the video notes, one of the common threads in that 12% was they're physically active. So that goes back to why I generated that content in the first place and why if you're not physically active, you need to get physically active, okay? That, that's not arguable. Um, and then outside of that, when it comes to diet, the 88% that are not metabolically healthy, there's a good chance that they are consuming roughly 15% of their calories from protein. And as a country, we have a problem with overconsumption of dietary energy, which is why we're getting fat. I don't think anybody's gonna argue against that. We eat too much. Um, so number one, we eat too much, but we eat too much carbohydrates and fats. We eat too much dietary energy. Yes, protein has calories, but the reason protein's not the problem, and I would argue protein is the answer, or a big part of the answer, is that protein helps um, facilitate satiety when you eat. So when you eat a high protein meal, you are fuller, for longer and more quickly than if you eat a low protein meal. So if you eat a meal like the average um, macronutrient composition what the CDC says that Americans eat, if you eat a low protein, high carbohydrate, moderate fat meal, you're going to get full at some point during eating. And then you're going to be full for a certain amount of time. The chances are you're not gonna stay full for as long as if that meal had been protein based. In addition, your high carbohydrate, high fat meals are hyper palatable. So you're eating food that's hard to not overeat in the first place. And then you're also eating food that does not keep you full 
as long as it would be ideal. So you're hungry again sooner, and now you're back to eating more of the same, you know, crappy macronutrient split in food. So <clears throat> with protein, if we ate the exact same amount of dietary energy, but we ate protein at a higher percentage. So instead of say 15% protein, it was 30% from protein. What would happen is protein drives energy expenditure. So, and I'll, I'll actually link studies for this down below in the show notes as well. Um, but basically, when you eat the exact same amount of calories, so the same amount of dietary energy, but more of your food comes from protein, your 24 hour energy expenditure goes up. So that means that even if you don't eat less total food, if you're eating more of your food from protein, you are going to be in a more favorable position for, um, with regards to 24 hour energy expenditure. If you're burning more calories or more energy around the clock, you're more likely going to see favorable changes in body composition. And there are studies that show that in, even in overweight people, increased protein intake drove muscle growth, which then has, and muscle actually has some benefits to improving cardiometabolic health. So basically your protein is going to increase satiety. It's going to keep, make you fuller faster, keep you fuller longer. Your protein is going to help you build lean tissue, even in the absence of resistance training, but we already talked about you're physically active. So increasing protein is going to help you build more muscle. Um, it's going to keep you full and it's going to raise your metabolism because your 24 hour energy expenditure goes up as you eat more protein. With that being said, because satiety goes up when you're increasing protein intake, you are naturally going to eat or you're naturally more likely to eat less carbohydrate and less fat. Really, you're, you're less likely to overeat the other two macronutrients. So that's why the first step to restoring your metabolic health dietarily is focusing on protein and being physically active. That's the first major step that you need to do. Everything else comes second to that. If you are vegan, one of the challenges is a lot of vegan diets are not high protein and they're much higher in carbohydrates than protein, which is not ideal. Um, same thing with vegetarians, although less so. So if you're vegan or you're vegetarian, you're watching this, which I don't think I have very many, but if you are, um, you need to focus on cre increasing protein intake. However, however it is you can do that as a vegan. Um, if you are a carnivore, you probably already have more than enough protein. You don't have to worry about it. Um, if you are keto, people drop an entire food group, um, carbohydrates out. They naturally tend to eat more protein and more fat. If you're keto, unless you're purposely trying not to overeat protein, chances are you're eating plenty of protein. Um, so whatever type of diet you're following, be it a balanced approach of protein, carbs, and fats, right? You eat, you know, whole grains, you're eating sweet potatoes, whatever it is. I'm not, I'm not going to bash any diet or tell you to eat a certain way in this video. My goal in this video is to tell you that the first thing you should focus on is increasing your protein intake because it's going to help curb appetite. It's going to help build and maintain muscle tissue. It's going to increase your metabolism. It's going to do all kinds of awesome stuff to help you get metabolically healthy, especially when combined with resistance training. Okay. So eat more protein. Now, with regards to how much protein should you eat, um, a good thing to target is 0.85 grams of protein per pound of body mass and being in that neighborhood. It doesn't have to be exact. And in fact, if your goal is to be lean and to lose body fat, there are some protein overfeeding studies that show that even very high protein because of increasing 24 hour energy expenditure, that increased protein can have a benefit to increasing fat loss. So. To, to make sure that came across clearly, eating lots of protein when you're trying to lean out is a good thing. Um, even if you don't need more than 0.85 grams of protein for body weight with regards to building muscle tissue, eating more than that will actually assist with weight loss. So definitely when it comes to protein, I would shoot for 0.85 grams per pound of, of body mass and even more if you want to eat overeat even more than that and your primary goal is to lean out, have at it, it will probably benefit you. Um, the other thing is if you don't want to, you know, count calories and track all your food and everything, which I don't, I don't think you need to, I would track protein intake. Um, it doesn't have to be super exact, but just to give an example, if I'm eating a pound of ground beef, I know I'm well over a hundred grams of protein just in my head. Okay. So you don't have to be like right on the money. Again, additional protein is not going to make you fat unless you are over consuming, grossly over consuming dietary energy. A little bit of extra dietary protein is not going to make you fat. So you don't have to be super anal about it. Um, but try to make sure that you at least get that 0.85 
Again, like I mentioned, I don't track everything, I don't weigh and measure everything, but I am cognizant of, of basically a rough estimate of my protein intake and I try to make sure I get my protein intake right. So if you have questions regarding how much protein you should individually be eating, um, I mean, I thought that was fairly clear, but in case it's not, you can ask in the comments below. I will answer you, try to help you out, give you some advice. Um, I'm going to, the next video is break down carbohydrates, we'll break down fats, and those two things are gonna be your primary sources of dietary energy, and we'll talk about how to choose which way you wanna be fueled, if you wanna be keto, if you wanna try carnivore, um, if you wanna do a balanced approach. We'll, we'll break down those different approaches, and uh, we'll dig in. And while I personally am carnivore keto, uh, and there's reasons for that which I'll dig into, and some of them are anti-aging reasons that I think are, um, that those potential avenues have enough research for me personally that I'm going to continue to eat that way, but we'll, we'll break that stuff down. And so with regards to this video on protein, if you have questions, ask below, or knowing that we're gonna be talking about those other things, if you have suggestions, if you have comments, then below this video, go ahead and sound off and let me know so that way I hear from you prior to shooting the next video. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, do so. Click the notification bell so you're alerted when I make new content. Um, I'm actually having fun making content for you guys. So if you have requests, if you have feedback, if you want more information, um, when I go to talk about carbohydrates and fats, reach out, let me know. And thank you for supporting Bodyweight Strength.